to worship none but Allah is the starting point of Islam. Isn't that true? What's the highest point you can reach with Allah? Ihsan. The starting point with parents is Ihsan. The ayah is not talking about the highest expectations, it's talking about the lowest expectations. You will be the best you can possibly be with both parents. You better watch out. And that is a first consequence. If you think of it as cause and effect, if you've truly expect, accepted Allah as master, then the first practical manifestation of that will be, you will act like Allah's slave before your parents. Your ego, your pride, your talkbacks, your snickers, not the candy. Your, your rolling of the eyes, all of that will disappear because you have to have the best possible behavior before your parents. This is probably one of the hardest commandments in Islam in 2012. Maybe it wasn't harder before. Maybe it was a society that all around was a society of respect. Maybe it wasn't a society that injected like drugs into people individualism where their primary concern is themselves, where they don't have a concept of what it means to respect an elder, and on top of that, what it means to respect a parent. I mean, never, they were never raised on that concept. I mean, I, some of you guys went to school, I didn't go to elementary school here, I went to elementary school in Saudi, and then, you know, a little bit in Pakistan, and then I came here. When I came here, one of the most shocking things, beyond the obscene clothing in high school, and the foul language, which I didn't even know what it was, I literally had to look it up in the dictionary, Right? I didn't even know what it was, I don't know what this guy is saying to me. You know, Beyond all of that was when people would talk about their parents. I was shocked. I just, like, how? How does that work? They're talk somebody's talking about their dad, and he goes, you know, Frank is so stupid, and this and that. Who's Frank? It's my dad. No, he didn't say my dad, he said my old man. My old man. Seriously. <laughs> like, a, he's a burden on you. And you're talking about him like you talk about an employee or about to fire. Allahu Akbar. Wa bil wali daydi ihsana. And why are these two things so related? And it, it, the reverse of this works too. Look, Allah takes care of us. Allah provides us, Allah feeds us, Allah shows us mercy, Allah gives us love. But before you recognize that Allah does all of that from the unseen, who does all of those things in the scene for you and me? My parents do and your parents do. The first introduction a child has to is to its mother, father, as they get a little more conscious, conscious father, you know. And in the beginning, just mom. Even the dad tries to hold the baby, and then he goes, nah, -uh. I like how mom feels. It goes back to mom. As the child gets older, then you know, dad's gonna give a break off of the chores. Oh, well, let's go out somewhere, let's get some ice cream. Don't tell mama, you know. But there is a relation, there's a very d direct relationship. Their entire world revolves around, you know, them. And you know, when I'm out of the house, or when the, the wife is out of the house, what do the kids say all the time? Where's mama? Where's Abba? The two-year-old. She's going on, where's Abba? Where's Abba? 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 And go check around. That's their world. Now, if you can't learn to appreciate your parents who are in the scene, then it's only logical that you're going to have a hard time, really hard time, appreciating Allah who is in the unseen. It's a direct correlation. Our inability to show gratitude and show appreciation to the most direct favor of Allah, our parents, has something to do with our inability to pray on time our inability to make du'a sincerely, our inability to cry in salat, they're directly related. And you think talking to, going out in a movie with somebody and sitting and talking to them in a restaurant, now you know who they are? No, you don't. What kind of delusional world do you live in? <laughs> that you have that idea. That's not how you know people. People present what they want you to see outside. Their real self comes out when they live with you. That's when the real self comes out. And you know, I've, in my experience, I know of several cases of Muslim boys and girls that were seeing each other, talking to each other, whatever, before marriage, and have miserable marriages. Absolutely miserable. And they keep saying, I thought you were someone else, I thought you were someone else. They keep repeating the same phrase. Their own logic slapped in their face. Don't go near it. Allah didn't say, لا تزينو, don't do zina. 
He said, don't go near zina. There are certain things that will lead you to it. The zina of the eyes, the zina of the tongue, you know, the zina of the hands, the zina of the feet. Just watch yourself, and especially the eyes. Because it, it's a road. It's a road that leads to a bad place. So Allah ends the ayah says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَةً It's always been a shameless thing. It's not like it's a societal thing right now and it'll be out of phase or whatever. It's always been there. And then these anthropologists argue, no, no, no. Marriage is a human construct. It wasn't always there. And we say, actually, it's as old as humanity itself. أُسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ It's not a human construct. كَانَ فَاحِشَةً It's always been wrong to do it. وَسَاءَ السَّبِيلَ And what a horrible path it's, it ha, has been. 